please subscribe to Face TV Africa and turn the notification on. Face TV Africa, and your subscribe, subscribe, and hit it. Face TV. Was Wobi? Was just today somewhere this morning. Yes. That Rwanda is trying to have connect all schools by internet. Rwanda, but we are looking for grazing roads. Now, contrary to the claim of President Muhammad Ibrahim and his Attorney General, grazing roads and grazing reserve were never part of. The policies of the federal government of Nigeria, at any time in our history, do you understand me? Yeah. Grazing reserve was a policy of northern Nigeria. At that time, the western regional government and the eastern regional government had ranching policy. In fact, ranching started in the west in 1956 where Akindeko was the Minister of Agriculture under Awolowo. The first ranch in Nigeria was built in 1951. You can even check in the internet. Obudukatu Ranch. Today is Obudu Holiday Resort. Because those who took over the affairs of our country didn't know what governance is about. So, you do not, it's not rocket science to produce meat. It is the height of primitivity for anybody to be talking of open grazing in the 21st century. So the point I'm making therefore is that today, land is governed by the Land Use, Decree, land use Act. In the Constitution, Obasan just small good the Land Use Act. Into the Constitution in 1979. Abubakar repeated it in 1999. So you cannot amend the Land Use Act today without going through the Constitution. Do you understand me? Under that law, the land in every state, land in every state is controlled by the governor on behalf of the people. The only land that President Buhari can control in Nigeria is the land in Abuja, federal capital territory. Outside the federal capital territory, President Buhari has no right to talk, to take a plot of land without getting the permission of the governor. Now, Gracie Reserves were owned by the Northern Regional Government. The implication is that the United States in the North have distributed all the grazing reserves. So the grazing reserve in every state in the north today is controlled by the governor of that state. Since it was never a federal government policy, the federal government cannot now be looking for grazing reserve to claim. Because they were never your program. They were never your own reserves. Do you understand my logic? Therefore, President Buhari should be appealed to to stop causing problems for the country. The Northern Governors Forum and the Southern Governors Forum have condemned open grazing. In fact, the governor of his state today, Governor Mazari, has even introduced tougher measures than open grazing. Do you understand? Because of the crisis of insecurity, on 16th of July, and this is very important for all of us, President Buhari made available to Casino State 6.2 billion naira for ranching, not for grazing reserves, not for open grazing. And the governor said publicly, I thank you, sir. I have received 5 billion naira from this money. And so, in the next few weeks, we are going to start ranching in Casino State. Now, you can't be promoting ranching in Casino State while you are talking of grazing roots in other states. The president, I'm sure you are all aware, is a header. He's a headsman. Why never the president, no, 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 it's not a laughing matter. Why never the president goes to his town, Daura? Yes. You all see him. He's 
first part of call. First part of call is the little ranch behind the south. Where he looks at his animal. He doesn't ask anybody to go and look for the animals on the road. They are behind this house. The president was embarrassed when it was disclosed that he had given money to Castilla for ranching. Uh, this fellow, Garba Show, they said, Oh, we have also given six billion naira to a boy. So it's not really Castilla. And the government of Boy has come out to say, Sorry, you have never given me a dime. No, no, come here. It's not a laughing matter. You know why? If somebody has done that, they will have said that is fake news. For which you can be tried under the Cyber Crimes Act. So, Larry, I think we have to take off the camera show. But on a very serious note, coming, we must all understand that this regime is out to divide and rule our people. The government knows that you cannot. <laughs> you need to know this. The president in Abuja cannot take a plot of land in Lagos without requesting the governor. And if the government says no, that is the end of the matter. Therefore, Gracie Root and Gracie Reserves are not allowed by the Constitution. The president has no power to ask for Gracie Root. That's number one. Number two, and I'm going to beg all our comments on this. The Minister of Finance announced yesterday, comment, that $3.6 billion has been spent on managing COVID-19. All of us, like all of us, must try and find out where is the money. What have you spent the money on? We are told that some farmers have been given about $500 billion. We want to know who these farmers are. We are told that over 700 million, billion, have been given to households. I think Sarah has already gone to court on that. Because Sarah has them, can we have the list of the beneficiaries under your Freedom of Information Act? No answer. No answer. So since this is public fund, which could have been invested to banish poverty from our country, but which, as you are all aware, has been cornered and criminally diverted. Poverty is rising in our country. Finally, comment, and I beg you on this. We must ask what I would call a Diola declaration to. And what that declaration is that rising from this hall, leaving this hall today. We must resolve that we are going to organize the masses of our people. Politically, we may have our differences and we are bound to have our differences. But we must have a minimum program for the transformation of our country from poverty to prosperity, from a land of poverty to a land of prosperity. Congress, six, seven years ago, hmm, we might be talking of and demanding genuinely for the socialist reconstruction of Nigeria. That task, Congress, that task is made much more difficult now because you have a government in power that has made the struggle for the unity of our country a more Herculean task. To the extent that young men and women who are frustrated are talking of their own kingdoms and republics. It's difficult for us now in many areas to say that the Bohos and the Kanus are foolish. It's difficult. If I will be risking your life, it is a fact. I've gone beyond what we were thinking about six, seven years ago. 
Sure, there is 60. Uh, honestly, I could not believe it. I'm serious. And I was telling Larry this morning, Larry, hmm. sure, there is 60. Oh. Larry, I wrote that. He said, yes. He said, we'll be 60 this year. I said, do you know that you guys are becoming senior citizens? Because of poverty, because of other development. A 60 year old person is a senior citizen. Yes. It's not like other countries, not like Cuba, where the lifespan is 75, higher than the US. Forget what they are saying about Cuba. The lifespan, you can Google, is higher than that of the US. So, in our own case, our lifespan is about 52. So, that is why a 60 year old man is a senior citizen. But the point I was making to Larry is that. You guys are joining our own club. Because we're going to continue. You know, to operate outside the corridor of power. Yeah. And that is why Congress are begging you and the other declaration. Today, from today, we must intensify our struggle to unite our forces to challenge the enemies of our people, the political buccaneers, and the economic saboteurs that have taken over our country. Come once again, I want to thank you, I want to commend you, I want to congratulate you. Please subscribe to Face TV Africa and turn the notification on. Face TV Africa, and your subscribe, subscribe, and hit it. Face TV,